Oh, It's a cold and dreary December day, really overcast and raining quite a lot, so hardly the most inspiring weather for landscape photography. But I'm out nonetheless, and the one benefit to weather like this is rivers tend to be running that little bit higher than usual, which makes them really, really interesting for long exposure shots. So I've come to a location on the west coast of the Isle of Man called Glen Willen, and there's a beautiful waterfall just sitting behind me here. And this is a location that I've never photographed before. So I thought I'm going to go out today and try and visit a few waterfalls and rivers around the island that I've never visited before and see if I can get some nice interesting shots of them in full flow. So I'll take you in a little bit closer to the waterfall behind me and explain the composition that I've already settled. You'll have to excuse the raging water in the background, that's the nature of these kind of things. Hopefully you can still hear me pretty clearly. Now, what I really like about this waterfall is you've got this beautiful clean sheet of water that just drops in the background, but then the water sort of tumbles and cascades right down here. So my natural instinct when I first arrived here was to try and come down this cascade and see if I can get a shot sort of down low, looking across this cascade going up to the waterfall. But what I actually found is the water's actually running a little bit too high today. And what that actually means is all of this area just ends up being a big white area on the actual photograph. You can't actually perceive any detail of rocks or the riverbed beneath it because the water is running too high. So that shot didn't really work. So instead, you can see just behind me there, I've set my camera up a lot closer to the waterfall and I think I've managed to find a composition that works so much better than down here. I'm now in a lot closer to the waterfall with my camera set up on the tripod and I'll explain the rationale for this exact composition. Bear with me here. <laughs> uh, the main sheet of falling water is obviously the main focal point in the image. But I'm going to position that out to the right of the shot because I think it creates a better balance overall. This bit of wall here to the side of the waterfall isn't particularly that interesting. So from there, it's actually this part of the image here, this foreground bit of water, which makes it the best composition here. Further downstream down here, you tend to get kind of uh, the, the white kind of water dominates the image. It's not broken up. Whereas here, we've got nice big dark boulders that really add contrast and shade to break up that dominating white of the, the, the flowing water. So I think it adds a lot of foreground interest, which is always really, really important. But there's actually so much more going for this shot as well. I'm probably gonna give it 50-50 priority between the foreground and the background. And that's because the background itself has quite a lot going for it. You've got this nice wall to the side of the waterfall here, but here, you've got this really nice area, this tanglement of winter trees, dark shapes, that contrasts very, very heavily against that overcast bright sky. And I think it actually looks quite moody and adds a lot of atmosphere to the shot. So in terms of an overall composition, I'm really, really pleased how this is looking. The rain's starting to come down a little bit heavier now, so I've got this nice little waterproof bag on my camera to keep it nice and dry. In terms of settings for this shot, I am shooting this at f11 to give me nice depth of field. One second to give a nice bit of movement in that water while still retaining a degree of detail. I'm shooting at ISO 64 at about 22 mil with my wide angle to try and fit in quite a lot into that scene. Um, in terms of where I'm focusing, I'm gonna actually probably focus stack this just to ensure I get maximum sharpness. I'm gonna focus down on this foreground folder here and then also on the background wall. And then I'll compile them in post-processing to get that better sharpness throughout the shot. I've also got a circular polarizer on here to take a bit of the glare off the boulders and the water so I can penetrate through that water and see a little bit more detail through it.
I've left Glen Willem behind and I've come to a location called Faulty Will Glen. And as you can see behind me, there's a really beautiful waterfall here just waiting to be captured. Now this is a waterfall that I've noticed before and it only really shows itself after we've had a lot of rain, but it's very difficult to get to. And I, I think for that reason, I've never seen any images of it taken before. You can actually see the road is just down there. So I've literally only just started the climb and it's really, really steep up here. Quite slippy as well because of the rain. Um, not particularly very easy, but if you just look up there, I think there's an awful lot of potential. So I'm going to persevere and keep on climbing, but be warned, there could be a lot of out of breath vlog entries on this. This is one of those treks. It's actually really short, but really difficult. You can see the start of it just down there and it doesn't look very far away, but bloody hell, this is hard. It feels like I'm carrying an elephant on my back. It's ridiculous. And I'm increasingly frightened that this is one of those waterfalls that looks utterly amazing from down there. But when I get up here, it's going to look pathetic. But even if it does, I guess I can just add it onto my list of places never to return to again. You know how I was speculating how this waterfall could be a real disappointment after that horrendous hike? Well, it's absolutely not. It's amazing. And dare I say, this is the best waterfall on the entire island. And I didn't even know it's here. Absolutely incredible. This cascade of water is really, really quite hidden away. You can only see the top of it from the road. But it's absolutely beautiful. Just the, the width of it and just the setting up on the mountains here is amazing. I cannot wait to get shooting this. For my first image at this amazing waterfall, I'm going to shoot at portrait. And that's really the logical choice given the sheer size and height of this waterfall. Now, I'll talk you through my exact thinking with this composition. You can see the water kind of falls into this beautiful gorge here. That's very much going to dominate my foreground. But I'm also going to balance that with this little rock here with this dry grass, this golden kind of grass coming out of it. I think that adds another element of interest that kind of disrupts the um, the, the water kind of overpowering that foreground, if that makes sense. It adds an extra element of interest. Then the water is obviously going to take on most of the image. Um, I'm going to shoot this super wide so I can get the full width and the full height of it. But I'm also going to get a little bit of sky at the top with those trees. But that's probably only going to be 25, 20% of the image. Not very much because frankly, there's not much going on up there that warrants dedicating more of the image to it. Overall, I think it's an absolutely stunning waterfall and I'm looking forward to trying some different compositions after I've nailed this one down. Settings wise, I'm going to be shooting this at f11, half a second to get a bit of movement in that water. ISO 64 at 18 mil because I really, really need to shoot very, very wide to get this huge waterfall in one single image. I'm probably also going to focus stack this because the boulder in my foreground down here is really close to the camera. so. I'm not going to be able to get that sharp in one image at f11 so i'm probably going to be looking at two to three image focus stack for this i'm also going to pop on my circular polarizer to take a bit of the glare off the water and rocks and i'm probably also going to pop on my two-stop soft edge grad filter because the sky is really really blowing out in the uh, the test images that i've taken so if i pop that on it should balance off the top of the image a lot better in a single exposure Landscape compositions can actually work here. But you've got to get much, much closer into the waterfall in order to get that low kind of angle to kind of look up and fit it all in. And that comes with its own challenges because it's kind of raining on and off today, but also the closer you get to that waterfall, the more your lens picks up moisture from it. And it's been very, very frustrating. I've been trying really, really hard to get a landscape shot 
but it hasn't quite come together at the moment. The circular polarizer on the front is just collecting so much moisture that I cannot get rid of it as fast as it actually comes. And even if you do manage to get rid of it, what you get is you get kind of like a, a misty kind of effect because obviously I'm not properly drying the actual front of the filter. So it's retaining that bit of moisture and it, it's just creating like a cloudy kind of effect to the shot. So that's not working at all. So I'm gonna ditch the circular polarizer altogether because it's a bigger surface area. So it's gonna pick up more moisture and I'm just gonna shoot just with the lens, no filters. And hopefully, hopefully that should make it a little bit easier to achieve the shot here. Nailed the shot, yes. I'm so, so relieved to have got that. It was unbelievably frustrating. The moisture was just accumulating on the glass in nanoseconds. I'd take my hand away and it would just be back to square one. Um, but I think that I've actually got a sequence of images where there's not too much moisture on there. And even if there is, I should be able to correct it in post-processing. I've kind of come to the conclusion that if you try to rub the moisture off too much, it can lead to that clouding, that kind of misty kind of effect. So sometimes just dabbing it off is the better approach. In terms of settings for the landscape shot, it was pretty much exactly the same as the portrait shot. The only difference being is I didn't use the filters for the landscape shot because they were accumulating too much moisture. Um, the circular polarizer itself cuts out a little bit of light, so I had to adjust the F number uh, to compensate for that. But all in all, it was pretty much exactly the same approach, and I'm super, super pleased with how both images have turned out. I'm very quickly running out of light now, so it's time to wave goodbye to the waterfall and head back down there to the start of my hike. It looks really, really steep from up here. So the key question is, can I make it down there without sliding on my ass? I actually managed to get to the bottom without sliding on my ass once, quite remarkable. Uh, you can actually see the waterfall that I was just at, just there. What a place that is. I was absolutely blown away by it and I think it is going to be a place I return to in future. It's an absolute pain in the ass to get there, but so, so worth it. Um, I think for today, I've kind of run out of time. I've, the light is going to go imminently, really, and yeah, I, uh, I just don't have enough time left to take you to any other locations. I hope you've enjoyed both the, uh, the waterfalls that I took you to um, and the images I took. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on both locations and the compositions that I went for and what were your favourites overall. Um, as always, any likes, comments or subscribes, if you haven't yet subscribed, are massively, massively appreciated. And I will see you all soon back on the Isle of Man where hopefully uh, I can take you to some more stunning locations and corners of my island. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.